New Denver Broncos edge rusher Frank Clark spoke with the media following today's training camp practice. Clark was a member of the Kansas City Chiefs from 2019 to 2022 where he won two Super Bowls and he was asked today about the Broncos Chiefs rivalry and he gave a very, very candid response. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Now this press conference clip is coming courtesy on Twitter of DNVR Broncos. Um, I wouldn't call it a rivalry, and a rivalry is, is competitive, true or false. Um, and I'm on the Broncos now, and I've been on the other side, you know what I mean? And we didn't call it a rivalry then. Um, I'm with the Broncos now. Until we become competitive enough, we have to beat the team. We have to win our division. We have to do a few things, not just about the Chiefs. Um, it's, it's things we have to do here. We got to get our own ball together here in order for us to go out there and compete for us to become one of those factions. So that was a very candid response from Frank Clark. I love it. He is basically saying that the Denver Broncos have to go out there and earn their respect in this division because the Kansas City Chiefs, they don't respect us. They don't respect us as division rivals. And why should they? We haven't beat them since 2015 when Peyton Manning was our quarterback and Alex Smith was their quarterback. That was the last time the Broncos beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I will say something else though. Although the Denver Broncos haven't beaten the Chiefs since 2015, they have always played the Chiefs relatively hard, and the games have been competitive for the most part. It's just in pretty much all of those games, the Broncos never had the necessary offensive firepower to close it out when the defense was performing really well and overall containing Patrick Mahomes and company. But the last time that the Broncos played the Chiefs, we had them on the ropes. We should have beat them, but they ultimately had to get aided by a bad offensive pass interference call on Cortland Sutton that ultimately caused the Broncos' potential game-winning drive to stall out. So if we come over here to StatMuse and actually take a look at our game-by-game -game record and scores against the Kansas City Chiefs, it's not as bad as the media wants to paint it out to be just in terms of the Chiefs not blowing us out every single game. And the games have been competitive. We look back at the last game that we played the Chiefs at Arrowhead, 24-27 loss. We really should have beat them, but again, they had to get aided by some ref ball there. 28-34 in the previous game, that was the game that Russell Wilson got knocked out. This is the game where the Broncos had that epic comeback where they were down, it was either 20 to nothing or 27 to nothing, I can't remember which one it was. And Russell Wilson led the Broncos almost all the way back, but got knocked out of the game and Brett Rippon had to finish it and he wasn't able to rise to the task. Again, the Broncos had the Chiefs on the ropes twice and they were in position to potentially beat them, they just couldn't close the game out. We'll go even further back here through the Patrick Mahomes era, and a lot of these games are relatively close. You'll come over here, the 2021 season finale, that's the game where the Broncos once again were in position to go downfield and take the go-ahead score, but Melvin Gordon fumbled the ball after getting blasted, and then Willie Gay returned that ball for a touchdown. So once again, we just couldn't close the game out. This was the last time that we lost to the Chiefs by multiple scores. That was at Arrowhead in 2021, where Teddy Bridgewater played an absolutely atrocious game. Then, 2020, another one-score game. It was at a Sunday, a Sunday night football game where Drew Locke basically could not get the job done in crunch time. He threw the game-losing interception to Tyron Matthew. Here was another blowout, our first matchup in 2020. This game was in a blizzard in Denver. Drew Locke once again looked horrible in that game, and the Broncos' defense couldn't make tackles to save their life. So that was just a game where everything went wrong on both sides of the ball for the Broncos. Melvin Gordon had a killer fumble, just brutal. Philip Lindsay suffered the injury in that game that ultimately ended his Broncos career. That game was just a brutal game in all facets for the Denver Broncos. Then 23-3, another blizzard, this one in Kansas City. This was Drew Locke's second career road start at Arrowhead, and the Broncos offense just really struggled to move the ball in a blizzard. Patrick Mahomes did enough to win that game. Then here, 30-6, to six, that was a horribly embarrassing game that Patrick Mahomes didn't even play in. Um, so there were a few games here, without a doubt, this basically three-game stretch where the Chiefs did blow the Broncos out and the games weren't even competitive. 
But then we go back here before that, um, 30 to 23. That was 2018 in Kansas City. Another one score game there. Another one score game here. This was the game where Case Keenum couldn't hit the game winning throw to Demarius Thomas. Once again, we had them on the ropes. And then December 31st of 2017, my 18th birthday, Patrick Mahomes' very first NFL start. That was when the Broncos were basically playing for nothing but pride at that point. It was the last game of the season. We were 5-10 and 10 on the year, and it was just an overall game where the Broncos were playing their starters against the Chiefs' backups, but they had nothing to play for, and it was probably better that the Broncos ended up losing that game because it gave them the pick that netted them Bradley Chubb, and ultimately Bradley Chubb played a key part in us getting Sean Payton. So it all kind of came full circle for the Denver Broncos. But just to kind of disprove Frank Clark's point a little bit, the games against the Chiefs have been competitive. Denver just hasn't been able to close them out. And I feel like the Chiefs probably owe Denver a little bit more respect in that facet because if the Broncos can just close out these games one time, then we will beat the Chiefs. Mark my words, if the Broncos can get their you-know-what together on offense for just one time, then I can I truly believe we can beat the Chiefs this season. But I do like the way that Frank Clark is approaching this message. He's, he's just making it clear that, hey, we're not going to go out there and just be able to beat the Chiefs. We have to earn it. We have to take it from them. And we haven't done that in all these years. We haven't done that since 2015. So at the end of the day, the Broncos have to go out there and actually take one away from the Chiefs before they can truly be respected as a rival from them. And I agree with that 100%. All right, Broncos country, how do you guys feel about Frank Clark's comments today? Do you guys agree with him that the Broncos do not earn the Chiefs' respect until they actually earn their respect? Or do you feel like the Chiefs actually do owe the Broncos a little bit more respect and flowers for being able to contain them somewhat? Although, again, they haven't closed out the game, so it's somewhat meaningless. Drop those comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, as always, guys. Be sure to leave a like on this video as well as subscribe and ring the bell so these videos appear in your notification feed. I would really appreciate it, guys. Those are two free and easy ways to show your support. It helps tell YouTube's algorithm to push us out to fellow members of Broncos country just like you and me. And until next time, guys, this has been another episode of Denver Broncos Syndicate. I am your host, Gage Madrid, saying peace out.